episode slash vignette of my book recommendations vlog. I'll try doing every one of these uh, maybe once a month and I'll just give you a taste of what I'm reading, what I think is good, and hopefully you'll get something out of it. First up is this book, Solace by Gail Carriger. Carriger, I bet. Well, this, according to the back, is Alexa Terra Body is laboring under a great many social tribulations. First, she has no soul. Second, she's a spinster whose father is both Italian and dead. Third, she was rudely attacked by a vampire, breaking all standards of social etiquette. Where to go from there? From bad to worse, apparently, for Alexia accidentally kills the vampire, and then the appalling Lord Macon, loud, messy, gorgeous, and a werewolf, is sent by Queen Victoria to investigate. With unexpected vampires appearing and expected vampires disappearing, everyone seems to believe Alexia is responsible. Can she figure out what is actually happening to London's high society? Will her soulless ability to negate supernatural powers prove useless or just plain embarrassing? Finally, who is the real enemy, and do they have treacle tart? Now, the nice thing about this book is that it's written in a very unique voice. It's written in the style of, say, Jane Austen meets steampunk, meets, well, thrown some vampires and werewolves in an alternate historical timeline. But yeah, this main character, Alexia Terabati, is Italian, like me, so I definitely sympathized with her. And unfortunately, her being Italian means she is olive skin, she's got dark hair, which is very unfashionable for the time, at least in the setting of the book, and that helps you really connect with her. And honestly, the main protagonist is very good, she's very witty, she's a kind of, you know, Pride and Prejudice kind of girl. And uh, Lord Macon is her Mr. Darcy kind of character where they don't like each other. And yet, they've known each other for a while, ever since the hedgehog incident. But regardless, there's also a nice little mystery in this one, like it's said on the back. Vampires are going missing. Same with werewolves, actually, which it didn't mention. And yet, new weird vampires who are uneducated about the social norms are showing up. So, it's got a nice mystery, it's got a nice romance, it's got a really nice, like, setting set up, so definitely a good recommend. If you read, you know, something steampunk, definitely try this one on for size. Next up is My Life as a White Trash Zombie by Diana Rowland. I don't know who Diana Rowland is, apparently she has two other books about demons or whatever, but um, I saw the cover and it's by a really great common cover artist, Daniel Dos Santos, I think is his name, but this one is really interesting. So let's read the back to find out a little what it's about. Angel Crawford is a loser. Living with her alcoholic deadbeat dad in the swamps of southern Louisiana, she's a high school dropout with a pill habit and a criminal record who's been fired from more crap jobs than she can count. Now on probation for a felony, it seems that Angel will never pull herself out of the downward spiral her life has taken. That is, until the day she wakes up in the ER after overdosing on painkillers. Angel remembers being in a horrible car crash, but she doesn't have a mark on her. To add to the weirdness, she receives an anonymous letter telling her that there's a job waiting for her at the county morgue, and that it's an offer she doesn't dare refuse. Before she knows it, she's dealing with a huge crush on a certain hunky deputy, and a brand new addiction, an overpowering craving for brains. Plus, her morgue is filling up with the victims of a serial killer who decapitates his prey, just when she's hungriest. Angel's going to have to grow up fast if she wants to keep this job and stay in one piece, because if she doesn't, she's dead meat. Literally. So, one of the awesome things about this book is definitely the protagonist. She is one of the most sympathetic people on my list. It's a great standalone, too. It's not part of a series like uh, Soul is. This was a nice wake-up. I don't see a lot of these lately, especially within the paranormal genre, urban fantasy genre. But, regardless, she's very sympathetic. She has really good motivations, the author really did the research and the observation for people because she's very human, even though she's a zombie, and she's also, like, her job, there are really nice unique details that make it unlike the CSI stereotype you see on TV. Like, it's a lot different, it's like 9 to 5 kind of, almost a hospital job. 
but it really helps you get really anxious when she's feeling the hunger and it gives a really good fresh look at the whole zombie mythos. It's not necessarily all slow, crawly kind of thing. They're actually intelligent kind of creatures like vampires, werewolves, all that jazz with a lot of similar vices, only it's brains, not blood, so it's a lot harder to come across. The setting is very modern day, urban kind of, you know, trailer park. Um, the deadbeat dad, for instance, he's like, on TV, he'd be painted as this horrible guy, just abandoned the family, all kind of thing, you know, after the wife ran off or whatever. But he's actually painted as really sympathetic. He's like, he does bad things, but you can, you get to know this guy through her eyes, and it really is like a dad who is desperate for some kind of respite from his horrible existence. And the father-daughter storyline is probably my favorite. The romance it isn't the strongest, but what makes up for it is the mystery. Like, you really get, like, who made her a zombie? And that's one of the recurring questions throughout the entire book up until the climax. And, you know, like, who's killing people? And it throws you a lot of red herrings, and, um, you know, it keeps you guessing. So the strongest parts of this protagonist mystery, you know, like father-daughter kind of storyline, like really sympathetic characterization for a really nice mystery. So if you want to check out zombies and you're not really a zombie gal like me, this is another good thing. If you want a just nice standalone where you read it, you're done, all that kind of stuff, definitely a good read as well. Next one on the list is part of a series. I'd give you the, you know, both books because they're really good, but for now, Grave Dance by Kalena Price. So, the premise of this one, let's see. Whoever said dead men can tell no tales obviously never met Alex Craft. After a month spent recovering from a vicious fight with a sorcerer, Grave Witch Alex Craft is ready to get back to solving murders by raising the dead. Alex is eager for the distractions of work, but her ca new case turns out to be a deadly challenge. The police hire Alex to consult on a particularly strange investigation in the nature preserve south of Necro City, where she lives. The strange part, there are no corpses, only fragments of them. A serial killer is potentially on the loose, and Alex has no way to raise a shade without a body, so she'll have to rely on the magic of others to find lead. But as she begins investigating, a creature born of the darkest magic comes after her. Someone very powerful wants to make sure the only thing she finds is a dead end, her rope. Now, before I get into this book, which is a sequel, I need to get into the series as a whole. First book, Grave Witch, very good. The um, main character, very sympathetic. I like my female protagonist, sympathetic. Alex Craft, she's like, let's just say she's Anita Blake. Anita Blake meets fairies. So, yeah, um, I definitely saw some influence of the Laurel K. Hamilton variety, only less racy. So, the premise and one of the strongest parts of this series is the world building. Uh, the premise of the world is that fairies and the Celtic myth, the Celtic mythology, which fairies had a coming out, kind of magical awakening, where they came out from under the hills, and um, kind of like Mary Gentry, oddly enough, but they came out and they basically reshaped society as society knew it. And this is set 70 years after that, where um, a new state has sprung up and a new capital city, Necros City, and the city is, or the state is Necros, and um, she is a witch because after the fairies came out of the proverbial closet, then witches and all kinds of magical stuff got thrown out and put into society, got integrated into society. So it's nice how they've come up with kind of an alternate future historical timeline if, say, all this myth stuff was real and wanted to make themselves known. So her kind of magic, there's different kinds of magic, but her kind is grave magic where she can look into the place of dead people. Not necessarily the afterlife, but kind of the in-between where ghosts and stuff lies. Everything's rotting and she's got really good settings in this series overall. And uh, in the first book, you come across a few, like, you know, you've got the love triangle, which is very characteristic of this genre. But in the first one, there's this, let's see, 
shades, which are like the memories, the bodily memories of dead people that she can, you know, infuse with life and they talk and, you know, she uses it to settle like court cases and all that kind of stuff. And she gets pretty decent money from this. She's still like suburban middle class. But um, shades start attacking people. That shouldn't happen. Like normally there shouldn't be that traumatic where they actually attack someone and then dark magic abounds and they have to solve a case. And this one, uh, it's got a good mystery. It's got nice character development infused in this. This one follows the same vein. They start finding severed feet where she can't raise a shade successfully, so she can't really do an end-all fix-all. So she's got to kind of investigate it herself because it relates to her a lot. Um, stuff that's starting to reveal her secrets starts to pop up from the feet. That stuff actually starts attacking her friends, trying to target her. So this one, very nice. And, you know, it's also got the, the nice dynamics. And none of it's settled. It's definitely an ongoing series. I can't wait for the third one, frankly. So, and it's got a really nice fairy mythology, like, it's more explored in this one than the first one, but, like, the fae are very touristy, they glamour themselves all the time to look like humans, they disguise themselves a lot, but they, the nice thing is that in this universe, they um, can still show their unglamoured selves, which is not all, you know, like, human-like and everything. She comes up with a nice variety. They glamour themselves in little pockets of the fairy other world, which in this one is the realm of fairy, in, like, little clubs. Like this one where a VIP section, it's basically a little pocket of fairy. And they've got a lot of nice little references. They don't know, they use a lot of generic tropes, not anything culturally specific. Which is nice. She covers it well for not being culturally specific. So yeah, definitely a good read. I pick up the series. The first one is Grave Witch. This one is Grave Dance. Kalena Price. So that has essentially been what I that that is essentially what I've been reading for the past few months. Like honestly, every single one has been worth it. I have been blessed, honestly, because I haven't picked a bad one yet. So there's a great plots and mysteries and everything good romances for those of you who like it and you know they keep you flipping the pages they keep you going and uh pretty much the i'll be reading more as it goes on but this list is what i've got so hope you like it hope you learned some stuff from it like stuff you might want to read in the future and um i i'll try to include links but i can't promise anything so enjoy.